G'day viewers, Alan here again. In a previous video I made this uh, tailstock uh, die holder uh, for one inch button dies and I was saying that I also wanted to make one that was suitable for two inch dies but um, this size holder worked for a one inch die go to a two inch die and it goes up to a well I was going to say a man size but I guess that's not politically correct these days is it but a, a, a much larger uh, die holder so I don't think this thing is going to cut it and we need to uh, to upscale and that's what this video is all about Let's move some of these bits out of the way so I've rounded up some relevant bits of scrap already and I've found this uh, piece of uh, hollow bar here I think it's more than a tube and it happens to be just perfect for the uh, the die size with no further turning but there's nothing no backing there to stop it falling through so anyhow we've got that we've got this uh, piece of scrap here which is going to be put into there and I'll slice this off about here somewhere so that will create the die holder and it will mount on here and this piece will be bored uh, out for an inch and I'll either sit it on a cut down version of this uh, redundant um, what do we call these things uh, it's got a morse uh, a four morse taper on this end and a one inch bore here it doesn't have a, um, a keyway but that's it's going to fit, get that so I'm going to bore this out to an inch put a keyway in it and either put a keyway mounted on there or make a new uh, arbor from scratch but anyway that's the job I get to it okay well I didn't get very far before I got called away to do something else no, that's what happens anyway so I've cleaned this uh, cleaned this piece up uh, it's about two inches diameter and um, it's got a lot of wear uh, on it so the diameters are all over the place it's not too bad here so I think I'll uh, I'll chuck it on this diameter now uh, it's about two inches as I think I said and um, to get a tight press fit into here I'm going to use the rule of thumb of two thousandths of an inch per inch of diameter so I'm going to make this uh, four thousandths of an inch bigger than a hole and that should make it a good press fit into there so I think you'll be able to see that this uh, piece of tube actually has a machined recess from its first life I think the thing was originally intended to be a bearing housing for a mounting on a rotary slash or something anyway it's got this um, machined rebate here so from the piece that I want to put in the end I've decided to mirror that and put two diameters on the end to improve the press fit so it will locate on this diameter and on that diameter and we start off by uh, just facing the end off getting that squared up Now we'll uh, say take a 20th hour clean up pass here and see what it looks like. Hundredth hour to come off the diameter. Okay, so we've got about 30 thousandths to come off the radius. And I think we'll do that in two, uh, two passes of uh, 50. So we'll take 15 thou and then have another measure. Mm -hmm. well, hopefully this will be a finishing pass. Okay, well that's the first diameter at size, so time to move on to the second one and turn that down to a required size. We wanted 2.049, so we're too thou big. Do 
2.048. I think that should be all right. So after I finished that second diameter, I realized that the first one uh, wasn't at the correct size. It was still too large. So I need to take a little bit more off. Right, let's just uh, shout for those corners. But now it's time to put a hole through the middle of this lot. It needs to be about a one inch, well, exactly a one inch bore to slide on my uh, arbor. Okay, there's uh, some uh, weird pattern from a cross drilling but um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to get the drill the hole started without too much trouble there um, perhaps I should bore it out flat a bit first all right so I've cleaned out the uh, the end of this recess using a boring bar uh, couldn't really uh, get any video of that because it's just uh, down the bottom of a hole uh, anyway next move is to drill a hole or bore a hole heading up towards an inch and uh, I can't film that because all this uh, shrouding around it. But as soon as I've got a hole, we'll come back and have a look. Okay, so it's not very exciting watching a hole being drilled, but I just thought I'd include a little bit in. So this is the 3132's drill to uh, make it uh, through and a bit undersized for a one inch reamer. Time for a bit of a clean up and a proper look. Well, not sure what you'll be able to see, but <laughs> there's a hole. Uh, time to get the reamer into it now. Okay, so I've put a, a 3132's drill through and followed it up with a slightly larger 25mm drill. So now it's time to um, put the one inch reamer through. This is actually an adjustable reamer, so I've got it set to uh, slightly um, on the underside. So I finished reaming the hole, and I've made up a bit of a size gauge. This is the uh, the one inch uh, test piece from my micrometer set, just on a, a rod, just to uh, do a size test of the hole. That's yeah. I'm not going to. I'm not going to force it. That's a pretty reasonable sort of fit. So that's somewhere in, somewhere near an inch all the way through there. And I haven't decided yet whether or not to use this um, um, redundant or spare arbor uh, as my uh, arbor for this piece. I might might yet do that. It's got a one inch diameter uh, shaft and uh, a four morse taper on the other end. So it's a, a good part of the way there. Anyway, so so that's a reasonable fit in there. It's a bit tight there. I'm not sure yet exactly why that is. It's come out the other end. It might be that the bore isn't quite straight. I'm not sure. Or it might be that this diameter gets a bit bigger. But it's pretty damn close anyway. So oh, call that it for that uh, as far as boring the hole through here is concerned. Okay, so I've got a one inch hole um, through this piece now and I've got the ends uh, turned to the diameter that's going to uh, be pressed in there. Uh, I'm going to use this, I'm going to use this arbor to mount it um, and um, face off or, or turn this outside diameter down and that'll make it concentric with the bore. Um, I guess it's not terribly important in this situation but it's nice to keep it ni nice to keep things uh, tidy and whatever. So we'll put that on there do that tight bring that diameter down to something meaningful and um, 
we're getting pretty close to doing the uh, keyways I guess get back to it so we've got the piece set up on the um, uh, arbor as a, as a mandrel for the, for the machining uh, with a tail stock to support the tail end I want to leave a five millimeter wide shoulder here uh, to press uh, against so turning this outside diameter down was an interesting exercise this bit of uh, scrounged material I don't know what it was but I think it must have had some uh, hard facing uh, welding rod put over it certainly the uh, hardness is quite variable at the right hand end it turns very nicely but in other areas it's bloody hard and it was uh, taking quite a toll on my uh, carbide inserts but I got there in the end so we'll just um, let's put a, a chamfer on this uh, transition here think yep, that feels pretty good call it done so uh, as I noted earlier the um, the arbor was a little bit tight it seemed a bit tight at this end anyway so I've taken my uh, uh, body out now and turned it around and I'll feed the um, I've adjusted the uh, the ream here to be just right so I'll feed it in by hand you get the picture so having done that uh, clean it was basically a very light scrape inside you can see that's a, a beautiful fit in there now Okay, so we've got this as a, a good sliding fit on the, on the shaft now, so that's great. So now, so now I have to um, get a keyway into this bore, a quarter inch keyway. My brooch, um, quarter inch brooch and uh, the guide mean uh, I can actually only cut a keyway that long, which is much less than I was uh, hoping to do. So reluctantly I've uh, forced to accept that I can't really use this unless I'm prepared to have uh, a very much shorter keyway, which I'm not. So what are my next option is to, um, uh, for a keyway of this length, a shaper would be ideal with a long stroke, but of course I haven't got a shaper. But what I do have is a, a lathe that's reasonably robust and I've faced this problem once before. I had to cut a quarter inch keyway in a bush that was about that long for my horizontal milling machine. And by um, using a, a oh, this was obviously a bolt with a quarter inch hole put in the end and a, a bit mounted, a quarter inch um, high speed steel bit mounted in there and ground to the right profile, you can run it backwards and forwards inside using the um, carriage travel and cut the keyway. It's a bit tedious because really you can only take about two thousandths per pass and the it needs to be um, an eighth of an inch deep or 125 thou so there's 60 or so ins and outs but it does work and uh, so that's what i'm going to do so the next step was to grind the high speed steel um, tool insert for cutting the um, keyway uh, i'm not going to show you all of that it'd be boring but uh, in this bit I'm doing the uh, grinding the top rake. Um, I just put uh, five degrees front clearance, a couple of degrees, very slight, just a couple of degrees on each side. It uh, didn't go very far in because it's not obviously not doing a very deep um, uh, channel and uh, five degree top rake again I didn't go very far so if I had to uh, uh, redo it um, I would be able to do that so ready to get started on the first cut of the keyway now you'll probably see the bar bend a little bit <laughs> just as it enters the, the hole and starts cutting you'll also hear the the cutter riding over some surface irregularities on this first pass
So that was the first pass. We'll come out two thousand, take our second pass. Well, that seems to be holding up. Lost count how many strokes I made now, but uh, getting a bit of a keyway starting to show up. It looks like we're about halfway there now. It's a bit tedious, but I think I've finished. It's producing some good uh, shavings though. Um, just uh, taking off uh, one to two thousand thick stripes, so the colour was working nicely. Anyway, time to do a bit of a test. So I've got this uh, arbor here from uh, some other, obviously, some other application. But uh, it'll serve, it's a one inch uh, shaft with a quarter inch keyway. So it will serve to test the fit. Mm, it's a, bit, a little bit tight. Oh, that's that's pretty good actually. Whoops. Yeah, that'd be that'd be fine. Be happy with that. So I thought it's worthwhile just having a quick look at the setup that I used. Obviously, when you're um, uh, running the the cutter back and forwards, doing the keyway, you don't want the truck to chuck to rotate. So I've got a stay arm here, which I made up a while ago. Well, when I had to do that first one, actually. And it's just bolted into the back of the chuck at this end and with um, an exhaust pipe clamped around a boss there so the chuck just can't rotate at all. Of course it's critical not to turn the lathe on while that arm's in place and uh, I actually had the, the lathe powered down to make sure I couldn't accidentally do that before I removed the arm. Okay, so um, here's the uh, what's going to be the die holder sporting its new uh, keyway. Um, and how easy that is to see. Try and get a bit more light there, see if that helps. Okay, you can see, you can see it like that. Alright, so that seemed to uh, go through fairly cleanly. And um, it does still fit on the, the shaft nicely. So I think that's all the hard work done now. Okay. So I'm going to end this video here because there is still quite a bit left to do. I've got to make the, uh, the die holder piece to press onto the end of the, of the body. I've got to cut the uh, uh, keyway in the shaft and I also have to um, make a, a fitting to go in the end of, uh, of this uh, guy because it's set up for um, a draw bolt and I need to have uh, I'll make a piece that goes in to make it look like a tang so it can be ejected from the tail stock. So I've made good progress, but there's still quite enough to do, and this video is already pretty long, so I'm going to end here. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I hope you come back for the second episode and see the finished product.